Okay guys, here we go for our second 10 ball Scotch doubles uh, on Thursday night. Uh, that last match was so quick, we've decided we're going to do a second one. And let's have a quick look at the brackets first of all. This you'll see here is a winner's side match. And it's between Steve UK and DJ Simon, who are getting two racks in this race to five. You'll see plus two there on the bracket. And they're playing Mr. Bill and Larry. And we're right in the middle of the first rack in this match. And Larry's at the table on the two ball. It's going to be a wee bit tough to get on the three. He might try this with a lot of right hand uh, English. Oh, he's going to try and draw back. It's difficult to say not being behind the queue. Does that three squeeze past the four and a nine? It looks very, very tight. Let's have a look. Well, I don't know what Bill tried there, but um, he's left a, a billiard three onto the nine if uh, DJ Simon calls it, but he's decided to play a safety, and that's probably the wiser choice. Keep things tight. And he didn't call a ball there, so that's a missed call. And he should miss call that, yep. So the shot goes back to Steve O. Cuts the three in. Well, does his partner a favour there and chips the five out and holds for the four, but it's a, a long four so the cue ball has to travel and this looks pretty good if it misses a ten. Now, let's have a quick look. Six ball passes a ten ball, so nothing needed to be done with the cue ball. Just run the five in, the cue ball's naturally going to get up towards that middle pocket and he's hit that too hard. Hit it a bit too hard. He still should be okay. He's left uh, Simon an angle on the six. But he didn't want to travel far as far up the table as that. And this needs to avoid the eight. Oh, disaster. Where's the only place in the table you could finish where you're going to land your partner in the mire? And that's right behind the eight ball. And that could ruin the chances of this rack. So Steve was going for the kick. He calls a seven into the corner just in case, but he's missed it completely. And that should be an open invitation for uh, Bill and Larry to snatch this first rack and reduce their deficit just to the one rack. So Bill just has to be a wee bit careful here. If he wants to leave Larry an angle to roll the eight in, that's probably a bit perfect. I think you can either just stun this and stop the cue ball dead. We'll see. Difficult to, to judge it. Yeah, he just he had the angle just to roll through and hold it off the rail, so he's leaving his partner Bill an easy ten. Just needs to roll it in. And so Larry and Bill got off the mark. They still trail by two racks to one. And in the second round match, it's um, still a race to five. This, of course, is a double elimination tournament. And the loser side's a race to three. So let's have a double check at the brackets again. Well, Romario and Z Carioca are sitting in the hot seat. So they'll have a little wait for the next match. I've got a feeling this match is a possibility to go all the way. I 
again on paper Larry and Bill would be the odds on favourites but again with the handicapping system it does even things out a bit and it puts pressure on uh, Larry and Bill to hold the game together and really really cut down on mistakes if, if they make mistakes then um, Simon and Steve are well capable of, of uh, punishing them so they just roll through a little tad here maybe off the end railing out for the five across the left middle that looks about the shot that's on and I think he's just gone a wee bit too far for comfort here Bill's going to be colliding with that 10 ball he's possibly going to be coming round behind the 7 it's not ideal to get on the 7 eh, sorry 6 he doesn't want to hook himself and of course he's he's taking his eye off everything there trying to force the 5 in and get on to the 6 which he did and that's just all from a poor positional shot, it could have been played better, he just got too much angle on that 5 for uh, Bill Larry there well, does he try and roll this 5 in dead weight yep He's left Bill a fine cut. Cue ball's going to possibly kiss off the nine, but he should be able to hold for the seven. And the nine's come away from the rail far enough. And I think there's enough angle to stun this in and draw the cue ball off the side rail and up the table and out for the eight. I think that's a possibility. Yep. And again, there's going to be a collision with the nine, one way or another here. Uh, he's managed to avoid it, just a little draw. That's been well played. And just drop the nine in, the cue ball's naturally going to finish in the side rail here for the ten, on the left hand side. Or stun it up, whichever he wants to do. It looks as if he wants to stun it up. Yeah, you know, kind of soft drag shot. Either way, it's perfect. And so, Larry and Bill have quickly eliminated the handicap, and they tie the match up at two racks all. How's his luck in the break? Well, six ball goes into the right middle as we look. And the one ball goes very close to the 10. Now, is it possible that he could call a combo in the 10 here? I don't know. I think it's just a bit awkward. The one's a bit too uh, too far past the 10, but he might be calling it just for safety's sake. Why is he calling it into that other pocket, though, I'm wondering? Oh, he tried to kick it. Oh, well, I'll give him the benefit of that one. And he's got away with it. He's left Simon hooked in the one. Simon can just kick the one. Probably best to call it in the, the corner pocket again. See, that's a mistake a lot of the guys make. And they forget uh, it's 10 ball. Uh, but especially when they're playing kick shots like that, it's always best to call the adjacent pocket to where that ball might be going to. And the obvious one is the pocket it went into. And Simon should have called that just for safety's sake. He could have flicked it. Um, but that's something people will pick up through time. But it's not a it's not a good habit to be in not calling uh, balls like that just in the off chance that you might flick it. It's always best to do so. Anyway, Bill and Larry are back at the table. The balls are all there for the taking. The seven balls, the awkward one, because it's tight in the rail, more or less. I think there's maybe a half an inch off the rail, just a wee bit awkward. But that's a bit more awkward because um, 
Larry's left Bill hooked on the five. And this could be a chance for um, Simon and Steve in a minute. If he doesn't kick this safe. See, Bill's doing the right thing though. He's playing the kick, but he's calling it the pocket, and that's the that's the way to play ten ball. And he's missed the pocket, but he's got it safe. It looks like he's going for the double bank reverse here. It's not going to get there. Where's the cue ball going though? Well, it's gone safe behind the five. And I think Larry will just nudge this up the table to somewhere in the middle of the table at the far end if he can. He's maybe in two minds. Just draw the cue ball to the rail, send it down there. And he's well, he's got the nine and ten as cover, so that's a good shot. And can Simon get the cover as well? It looks like he's been successful. Again, Simon played a shot there. There wasn't really an adjacent pocket, but he's just not in the habit of calling um, a pocket when he's actually playing that kick shot. Whereas if you look at Bill, Bill naturally comes to the table with a kick shot like that and, and just calls a pocket um, because he's, he's used to doing it. And hopefully Simon will have a look at this video well Steve was going for a, a wild combo on the 10 here and that was well away from the pocket and the five balls just come off the rail at about a couple inches and knowing Larry he'll try and thin this in but the cue ball's going the wrong angle from the seven and he's played that well managed to check the cue ball back towards the seven and he's got lucky and he's got Bill on position So this looks like an easy out for Larry and Bill. I just left a nice cut in the 10 into the middle. Let's have a quick look at the potting angle. And you'll notice Larry had a quick look. You'll see not there's some players don't look. Almost best to double check how the ball's going to the pocket. So that's Larry and Bill won three straight racks, so they're now into a 3 2 lead. But I still think there's a lot more left in this match. Larry chooses to pass the break to his partner. See if Bill can get any better luck. Well, nine balls hanging over the bottom left corner pocket, but nothing went in. Although there will be in a minute or two because that one's going straight on to the nine. So he's going to call the ten the uh, nine ball, play the one onto it. And just playing it dead weight so the nine doesn't bounce anywhere outward. And the two goes past to six, so there's not a lot needing done with the cue ball here. And that three 
it goes into this corner pocket here past the seven. It's a bit tight, but it will go. And now the problem shot is this one because he's pretty much dead straight on the three. And he needs to draw back up the table somewhere past that middle pocket. And uh, he's, he's flashed at that one because it was nowhere near where it should have went. But again, I've got away with it. Bill's going for the kick, but again, Bill force a habit, he's calling a, a ball in a pocket. Yeah, this is good as an opportunity as Simon and Steve were going to get because, well, now they're not taking the time. He should never have missed that. seem to be in a rush to get things over and this is the thing there's still a shot clock you can still take the time in your shot clock get the shots lined up and focus on what needs to be done but uh, they seem to be in a rush to give things away here Simon and Steve oh, two poor shots one after the other and that's an open invitation for players like Bill and Larry as soon as they see their opponents doing that, then that takes the pressure straight off them. You want to be keeping the pressure on these guys. And Larry kicks the six ball. Now, what does Bill do? Does he just drop through a couple of inches and leave Larry the cut down the rail? Well, he's tried to manoeuvre the cue ball over there with a lot of English. And he's overdone it. Now, seven ball doesn't pass the ten. So what does Bill, uh, Larry do? Is he going to call the combo or cut it down to the right-hand corner as we look at the top of the screen? It's anybody's guess what he's going to do here. Well, he's played for the corner as an awkward cut. And... That's maybe one shot too many. Now this time, surely, they're going to take their time. Now Simon just needs to stop the cue ball. That's all he needs to do. But again, he's just run out. The angle just took him away there, and this isn't, this isn't ideal. But the pressure's on to get this 10. I need to watch the cue ball as well, he doesn't want to run through into this bottom right hand corner pocket. But he stuns it in. And that's Simon and Steve will winning their first rack in the match, although they had a two rack lead by the, uh, by the handicap, it's now three racks all. And again a dry break. tight pa past that three there he, he clipped to three but the two still went in that was a good shot Bill might want to try and come across the table twice here needs to miss the ten and that's another good shot and we could have a possible six uh, ten ball combo coming up because the seven, sorry, the eight ball is blocking the path for the six and up into that top right hand corner as we look. So that might be the plan. Bill's looking at the lay of the table, but I think he maybe want to try and draw that cue ball up the table and leave Larry a look at this. Um, well, um, 
the least said about that shot the better because look where the cue ball finished he just rushed at it snatched at it missed to five um, Larry, uh, Bill knows that's a bad shot well that's a missed call because that's banked into the wrong pocket that wasn't the one they played it into and that's now given Larry the opportunity to call the 10 this is possibly the shot Larry should have been playing two seconds ago He's not got it. No, I think the six is too close to the ten. Yeah. I was thinking there was maybe a billiard on there to billiard the ten in, but the six was far too close to the ten and covering most of it, so that prevented that shot. And Bill's managed to use a seven to cover up the six, but no doubt Steve will dig out the jump stick. Looks to be jumping his playing cue at the moment, and from far as I can see. Yeah, I think he forgot to change the jump cue. did, forgot to choose it. Well, this is going to be 4-3 to Bill and Larry. That was a bad mistake. So, Larry's got an easy 10 into the bottom right, and it's now going to be 4 racks to 3 in favour of Bill and Larry. But uh, Simon and Steve have only got themselves to blame. They've played a couple of rash shots at the wrong time. And Bill's not having any luck on the break. Simon looking for cover down the table. And he's got it. Again, Larry and Bill are clued up on what to do in 10 ball. Larry's playing the kick shot, but still called a pocket, just in case. And I think he's left that more or less safe as well. Six balls covering the middle pocket. But there's plenty of balls there to use as uh, targets to, to hide behind. I think that was an attempted pot there. This rack's uh, most certainly not over because 10 balls tied up with the 8. Um, Bill's managed to get Larry onto the 2, but there's no shot in the 3. Larry did his best to try and create something, but the angle was never there to move that three ball. Now, is that eight and ten a combination down into this bottom hand corner pocket here, the bottom right hand as we look? Well, that's probably going to change any second or two because there's going to be an attempt to hit this three, which is well hooked up behind the four. And that changes the perspective a bit. Ball in hand to Steve O. 
and he's now got the opportunity to create an angle when potting this three. Well, what's he doing here? Well, he's looking at the eight and the ten. Is it still set? It might be still set. Maybe it hasn't changed. Oh, it's just running away. Well, they're still okay because the... I don't think that four passes eight, does it? Uh, well, it does, yeah. It's tight, but it does go. And a nice angle here on the four just to drop back out onto the five. He's going to have to use most of the pocket, but it goes in sweetly. And now the problem ball is a six. Got to get this bottom side, bottom half of the table here to to um, give Larry a shot in the six, possibly into the left middle, or if he doesn't go in off into that bottom right. trying to get the cue ball round but he's fallen short he's left Bill a straight choice he can either call a bank or cut this in but he's uh, under hit it and undercut it but he's covered it now let's have a look Simon going to risk the jump shot I would think he has to because this 7 is adjacent to the pocket and I would think it's got to go in but where's the cue ball going to go? well it's going to go into that pocket I think yeah and that might be Simon and Steve's last shot in this match so ball in hand for Larry, gets the eight, gets the cue ball well up the table, and well, Bill just needs to stun the nine in, cue ball up the table, back down the table if he wants to leave Larry taking it into the top right, or he can do that and just roll through. It was either or, whatever choice you prefer, and Larry's got a fairly straightforward ten down the rail to seal the match by five racks to three and Simon and Steve will head to the loser's side and Bill and Larry continue on in the winner's side so match over Bill and Larry wins five racks to three